It may look like a quiet, relatively uneventful week, and it's definitely not the most loud astrological moment, but it is setting the stage. It is the exhale before the inhale of eclipse season, which is coming in hot. This is Witchy Wisdom Weekly, a breakdown of the upcoming astrological weather, plus the tools, practices, and mindsets you need to navigate it all with confidence and clarity. We are talking about the week of September 8th, 2024. If you're new here, I'm Dana. I am an astrologer a witch and the creator of self-help witch if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel leave a comment and you can find me on instagram at self-help witch as well let's start by getting into the cosmic context where we've been and a little bit about where we're going so we have a better understanding of the significance of what's happening astrologically this week we've just moved out of a loud astrological moment with the astrology of mid-july and august specifically thinking about august 19th we had a full moon in aquarius with two t-squares happening at the same time the full moon itself was squaring uranus and then we also had venus and saturn opposing each other squaring jupiter and mars and gemini it was bonkers there was so much happening at once and luckily gracefully we have found a moment of calm and stillness within the last two weeks venus moved out of virgo the sign of her fall and into libra her domicile relationships and money stuff and values have hopefully felt just a little bit easier a little less tense a little less fraught with a critical eye the backdrop of all of that though which is like a generator humming in the background it's there and it's helping you but you forget that it's happening because it's just there doing its job are the outer planets all in harmonious aspect with one another so we have neptune at 29 pisces who is sextiling Pluto, who's moved back into Capricorn at about 29 cap. And Neptune is also sextiling Uranus at about 27 degrees Taurus, which means that Pluto and Uranus are trining each other, both in Earth signs. I talked a little bit more about that in last week's video, so you can check that out to get a better understanding of what this configuration between the outer planets is all about. That configuration is going to become important because as I said last week, as planets move through Virgo, they are going to hit all of the outer planets by aspect. And next week, we're going to see the sun make an aspect to Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto all while participating in a full moon lunar eclipse, which we'll talk more about, of course. But as I said, for now, there is a moment of calm that we get to experience this week, but it is setting the stage for what's going to be happening in the following two weeks, really the following three weeks during eclipse season, which is going to start on September 17th. And then our second eclipse of this season will happen on October 2nd. So this week we have a bit of quiet and supportive astrology along with what I think will be a taste of what's to come next week. Now, before we get into the astro weather for this week, I want to tell you, normally I just talk about the transits from Sunday to Saturday, but I'm going to include some of the transits for the beginning of the following week because we have some important things happening on Sundays in the next couple of weeks, and I don't want to wait to talk about those until they're already happening, and I want to touch on this eclipse that's happening next week in this week's video. So with that, let's talk about the transits that are coming through this week. Monday, September 9th, Mercury enters Virgo once again. Woo! We love that. Wednesday, September 11th, Mercury will sextile Mars at 4 degrees 21 minutes of Virgo and Cancer, respectively. Thursday, September 12th, the Sun will square Jupiter at 20 degrees 10 minutes of Virgo and Gemini. Sunday, September 15th, Venus will trine Jupiter at 20 degrees 23 minutes Libra Gemini and of course Tuesday September 17th so not this coming but next Tuesday we have a partial lunar eclipse at 25 degrees 40 minutes of Pisces the first piece of witchy wisdom for this week has to do with Mercury in Virgo and that is to get strategic and create a plan obviously this is what Virgo is great at and that's because Mercury is the ruler of Virgo Mercury is the strategist 
artist. It is the person and the energy that can assemble the details, organize them meaningfully, interpret the data, and can create a really solid step-by-step -step plan for how to get from A to B. But the other reason that this is such a great time to plan beyond Mercury being in its home sign is that Jupiter is benefiting from Mercury being in Virgo. That's because Jupiter is in Gemini, Mercury's other home sign. And that means Mercury is the host of Jupiter. Now, if you're like, what is she even talking about? All you need to know is Jupiter is in Gemini, which is Mercury's home sign. And Jupiter's in detriment here. It has a harder time seeing the big picture, finding unity, cohesion, growth, expansion. But when the host of Gemini, which is Mercury, is in a strong position, which it is in Virgo because that's its home sign, that's good for Jupiter. But not only do we have the clarity and the attention to detail to assemble a plan, Jupiter can benefit from this too. Seeing the big picture, finding unity and cohesion, finding ease, all of that can be assisted by a strong Mercury right now. So it is the time to assess, especially because we just got done with a Mercury retrograde. I'm willing to bet because of the intensity of Mercury retrograde, that wild full moon we had in Aquarius on August 19th that we talked about, we probably all experienced a little bit of upheaval, some situations perhaps that made us question what we really want, that gave us some new ideas. And we are now at a place where the dust has settled. Given Mercury's strength now as it enters Virgo, this is the moment, especially before eclipse season kicks off next week, where we want to reassess and say, all right, what did we learn during Mercury retrograde? What did the astrology of August show me, teach me, reveal to me that now I'm ready to incorporate and integrate and allow to guide me in a different direction, or maybe not a totally different direction, but a more aligned direction. This is the moment where we can get very clear on that. So take advantage of this energy. Witchy wisdom tip number two has to do with Mercury sextile Mars on Wednesday and the sun squared Jupiter on Thursday. And that is to pace yourself. When I see these two transits back to back, I think, wow, we're gonna have some energy and clarity at the same time. That's Mercury sextile Mars. Sun square Jupiter is helpful. Like any aspect with Jupiter, I would say would be helpful, but there's a couple things we have to consider here. One, Mars is in fall. Two, Jupiter's in detriment. And three, we're talking about a square between the sun and Jupiter. So what does that all mean? Anytime we're dealing with planets in detriment or fall, that speaks to a proverbial fly in the ointment. It doesn't mean that nothing good can come from this energy at all. It means that there's some kind of hurdle to overcome. There's something we need to clarify or get through or go through or process before we can get to that thing. And with this particular energy, especially with Mercury being so strong right now and the sun also being in Virgo and Jupiter being in Mercury sign, I think about the galvanizing of an idea, whether that comes through a discussion, something you read, something that just pops in your head. There's something mercurial that comes through that you're ready to take action on. And then the sun comes in squares Jupiter and it feels overwhelming. This is the first word that comes to mind when I think of sun square Jupiter, especially with Jupiter and Gemini. It's just like, whoa, there's too much to think about. I don't know where to begin. Luckily, we do have this really strong Mercury, but it could be very easy to go too hard, to do too much. If you were to, for example, set a workout routine for yourself, it would be very easy to overdo it and say, well, I'm going to do an hour of weightlifting when you haven't worked out in several months and maybe hurt yourself. You want to really try to do less than you think you can do for a couple of reasons. One, I just think this is a smart move when you're trying to do anything new, when you're trying to implement something you've never done before. If you think about New Year's resolutions, 
I don't know about you, but mine in the past have always been, and I don't really do them anymore, but they were always very like ambitious, like way too ambitious. You, know, you look at it on a piece of paper and yeah, that looks great, but what is the likelihood you're actually going to do that? That's what this energy is giving me. It's just too ambitious being very energized and excited about the idea of something and then the overwhelm kicks in and when you're overwhelmed you give up so if you can really take whatever idea or thought or discussion whatever it is whatever mercurial thing comes through if you can harness the strength of mercury and the strength of virgo and break it down into bite-sized pieces and really bite-sized what's a one percent step you could take i think that is going to help avoid the potential overwhelm with sun squared jupiter and it will allow you to get some early wins and feel successful and therefore build momentum and keep going with whatever it is you might be trying to accomplish now, even if you're not trying to incorporate something new, that might be like a really specific manifestation. I think we can say generally that there is going to be some energy behind an idea, a discussion that motivates you to do something and that something could lead to overwhelm. So that's the general takeaway is if you start to feel overwhelm creeping in, step away Stop taking action and start by just breaking it down. What is step, not even step one, two, and three, but step 1.1, step 1.2, really breaking down whatever it is into the most discrete steps as possible. Witchy wisdom tip number three is for Venus trying Jupiter. That's happening a week from today, next Sunday the 15th, which will be two days before the lunar eclipse in Pisces. And for this transit, I want you to bask in the best case scenario. That should be fairly easy to do. Venus trying Jupiter is so beautiful. We've got Venus in domicile and yes, Jupiter is in detriment. But as we said, the host of Jupiter, which is Mercury, is super strong. So there is the potential with this air sign trine for us to really galvanize a thought, an idea, to articulate something that is very beautiful, aligned, and because we're talking about Jupiter, I always think about the vision. So knowing where we've come from, that Mercury's gone back into Virgo, that we are coming out of a period of intensity and into a period of calm, it feels like this week leading up to this transit for sure is about clarifying the ideas and figuring out how you want to proceed. The trine between Venus and Jupiter can help you align it to your values, what you really want and desire. Yes, Venus is about relationships, but let's not forget that it's also about value. Whether we're talking about what you materially value or your operating principles, your values for life. And when we're thinking about Venus and Libra, I think that's especially true. Saturn is exalted in Libra and we know that Libra is the scales. So there's something about Libra that's about discernment. And we are able to discern based on our values. Think about that for a second. How do you discern what stays, what goes, what's good, what's bad, what's right, what's wrong? Not that there's ever a black and white dichotomy there, but I think you get where I'm going. There is a need to have some kind of standards by which you're judging something. When it comes to Venus and Libra, we are able to more easily figure out what's aligned, what can stay and what can go based on our core principles, what we really desire and want. So this trine between Venus and Jupiter, again, in air signs, it could be a conversation you're having. It could be something you write about, but I want you to take some time on Sunday the 15th to reflect on what comes up for you along the week in terms of what you're trying to create and bring forth and the ideas that are coming up, the conversations you're having. You think, what is the best case scenario here? What's the dream? What's the 10 of cups in this particular instance? What is the vision that is so beautiful and so enchanting and so aligned that 
I can't let it go. I can't forget it. And it will motivate me till the day I die to go after this thing. And that might be a little hyperbolic, but it just feels faded and important as it's happening so close to the eclipse on Tuesday. Now, speaking of the eclipse, there is another reason that I say to bask in the best case scenario here. The eclipse is happening, as I said earlier, at 25 degrees Pisces. So the moon will be at 25 Pisces. The sun will be at 25 Virgo. Guess what's at 28-ish Pisces? Neptune. So this means that there is a huge emphasis in the eclipse on all things Neptunian and of course on all things Piscean, which there's a lot of overlap there. It's mysticism. It's transcendence. It's also longing and escapism. It could be dissociation. And for all of us, it'll be different depending on our charts and rarely if ever do really major things happen on the day of the eclipse. However, for me, I think that the eclipse could really kick up some feelings of lack and scarcity because Neptune is a lot about longing and so is Pisces. There is this feeling of wanting to transcend and let go and be somewhere else if we're operating from a scarce place in our psyches and our lives. So if we can go into this lunar eclipse with a sense of what we do have and where we're going and hope, then I think we will experience the lunar eclipse much differently. Now, of course, there are things that happen regardless of how we approach them. But I really believe that your perspective can change everything. What you believe shapes your reality. And if you're listening to this, I think you probably already know that. If something does happen on the day of the eclipse and there is a setback, if you went into that rooted in this gorgeous vision for where you want to go that physically excites you. Have you ever felt that way? Just so excited about something that you felt like you were physically buzzing. You can feel your energy like amping up. If we have that kind of energy, which the astrology can facilitate with that trine between Venus and Jupiter, if we have that going into the eclipse, I think regardless of what happens with the eclipse, we will be prepared to continue on rather than feel like we're so far away from where we want to be and that we're never going to get to where we want to go. Because another thing about Neptune and Pisces energy is it can also feel very overwhelming. And knowing that this Jupiter in detriment is the ruler of the full moon, that is a huge potential feeling that we could experience with the eclipse. So all of that just underscores the original point, which is spend some time Sunday really envisioning and feeling in your body what the best case scenario is and articulate that. This is an air trine. So we want to use our words, our ideas, our writing, any form of communication, our voice notes app, like talk to yourself. We want to articulate the best case scenario so that we can feel it in our bones and use it to carry us through a full moon eclipse that may kick up feelings of scarcity and overwhelm. Now we will talk way, way more about this eclipse next week, but for now, I just want you to focus on what's happening this week, which is Mercury moving back in Virgo, paying attention to what clarity comes through, Mercury sextile Mars and the sun squared Jupiter. Notice where you're ready to take action, but pace yourself, bite off little bits of a time and take baby steps. And then as you do that, you'll arrive on Sunday at Venus trying Jupiter where you can really solidify and get excited about where you're going. Now we've been talking about the general mundane transits that are affecting the collective and that includes you. But did you know that the astrology of the moment also activates your unique birth chart? You have your own set of astrological transits happening all the time that affect you personally. Like for example, my son is at 23 Pisces. So this lunar eclipse is activating my natal sun and the house that my natal sun is in charge of. 
it can be a lot to unpack on your own. And that is why getting an astrology reading can be super helpful. I offer three different kinds of astrology readings. And one of them is the astrologically aligned forecast reading. If you want to know how the astrology of the upcoming year or so is going to affect you personally, especially if you're trying to do things in your life, like you want to find a partner or you want to start a new job, or you just want to understand what spiritual lessons are coming up for you, I highly recommend booking a reading. You can learn more about that down below. That is it for this week's Witchy Wisdom Weekly. If you don't already subscribe to the channel, please do leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video and what questions you have. You can find me on Instagram at selfhelpwitch and check out all of my work at selfhelpwitch.com. Thank you guys for being here. I hope you have an incredible week full of clarity and insights that get you excited about where you're headed next in life. Love you. Keep going. See you next time.